When you hear the word war, what's the first thing you think about? What comes to mind? Well, there is no bigger war that any of us has ever gone through other than the war against our minds. So number one, your fight for a healthier mind is a fight against Satan himself. Believe it. Not only do we have to battle our own thoughts that come from our own baggage, but we have an enemy who's doing his best to influence and tempt our thoughts and plant his ideas in our minds. You see, Satan builds strongholds in our mind and he controls our thoughts from within them. A stronghold could be anything, just to give you an idea, pornography, alcohol, gambling, and there's a whole bunch more. Um, but the war against Satan is actually a spiritual one. And it's actually the battlefield of your mind. This is why in my previous point I said that Satan likes to build strongholds in our mind and control our thoughts. So most of the time, it is demonic activity behind that person that's probably treating you horribly. The challenge is to not look at the person per se. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse the Apostle 12, Paul tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in the heavenly realms. So hopefully now it should make more sense to you when somebody's treating you horribly or just out of the blue treats you like crap and you're trying to figure out why. Now you understand that there is some satanic activity behind most of it. You see, we are trained from birth, mainly because we just don't know any better, to look at the person. Because truth be told, it is the person technically, let's say, lashing out at you. But you, however, you got to remember to always be mindful of the spirit behind the person. Remember, like I just said, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, people. We wrestle against principalities and powers and spirits. You see, controlling your thoughts allows you to control your own actions. There is a reason that the Bible tells us to take every thought captive and bring it into submission to Jesus Christ. Why is that? Well, remember, not only do we have our own baggage, but we also have the enemy, like I said before, fighting hard against us in our minds. The mind is where the devil attacks. That's where the battlefield is. You see, everything we do starts with a thought. So where are the thoughts formed? Exactly in our minds. So what many don't realize, sadly, is that Satan creeps into our minds, sometimes as early as childhood, and begins to wreak havoc in our lives. You see, remember, the thief, Satan, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And believers, we are his enemy. You see, many believers don't take spiritual warfare seriously. And if you don't take it seriously, you really need to start studying and reading on how to battle the enemy the right way. Or I'm telling you right now, he will take you out. And it's sad because a lot of churches don't even preach on this subject so that the saints can actually be prepared for the battle. So you're in a war, and you need weapons, right? So what weapons do we use against a spirit? Your only weapon as a believer to fight against Satan is the Word of God. In Ephesians 6, the Bible tells us to put the whole armor of God on. So what is armor? A helmet, a breastplate, the belt of truth, shoes of the gospel of peace, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the shield of faith. So why would God have us put armor on if it wasn't necessary for us to do so? Just think about that. Also, did you notice that the armor is all for the front of us? Obviously, it's for a reason. And to me, that reason is that we must face our battles head on, not turn our backs and run from the battle. You see, the one thing you can do to battle against the enemy is to fight against the devil by praising the mighty name of Jesus Christ from the depths of your heart. You see, Satan can't stand it when people praise and glorify God. He will literally flee. And see, you have to remember when Satan was in heaven before he was thrown out of heaven, he wanted God's glory. So it just gets to him when we glorify God and when we do it of our own free will. Also, prayer can also strengthen your relationship with God, which in turn actually weakens Satan's control over your thoughts. So how many of us need to improve our prayer life? And listen, I don't have it all together either. I need to be better in that area myself, and I'm just keeping it 100. You know, we must all quit making excuses as to why we don't have enough time for God, for prayer, and for studying our Bible. Some additional things that you can do is 
to just identify and resolve any childhood trauma that you may have experienced, as this will help you start destroying the earliest stronghold that Satan may have built up in your mind that you don't have no idea of. I'm going to touch some nerves with this one, but I have to say it. Now, earlier when I said childhood trauma, I thought about a very sensitive subject that is in the news every day now. You see, the Bible makes it very clear what sin is, and when I see well-known prominent pastors scared to speak the truth when they get asked if homosexuality is a sin, it actually sickens me. First, let me say this. Homosexuality is a sin, just like murder is a sin, adultery, lying, fornication, and so on and so on. There are numerous scriptures to back it up. A moment ago, I said that Satan builds strongholds in our minds as early as a child. So how many children say that they felt like they were born in the wrong body? You see, there's a whole lot of that going on today if you just watch the news, this agenda that they're pushing. Now, let me tell you, God does not make mistakes. If you were born a girl, you're a girl. If you were born a boy, you're a boy. Period. End of story. What really bothers me is that Satan has such a stronghold on many of these people's minds that they can't even see the truth when it comes to homosexuality. So why do you think so many have transitioned, so to speak, and are now detransitioning? I see stories in the news every day about people wishing they hadn't made that choice because they should have never done so. Because their eyes have been opened, thank God. And just because you may have a same-sex attraction doesn't mean it's normal or that you were born that way. That's the farthest thing from the truth and another lie of the enemy in our, guess what, our minds. You see, I'm a heterosexual man, and I like women. So I married one. And I could have a propensity to go out and commit adultery and cheat on my wife every day with all the pretty girls that I see. You see or, and I could run around saying, hey, I was born this way, with this penchant towards sleeping around with other women, just as the homosexual may say, they were born this way, with this same-sex attraction. Are you getting my point here? Just because you have a desire to do something doesn't mean you should do it or give in to that desire, especially when God says it is a sin. And finally, before I move on from this subject, let me say this. If you are homosexual or struggling with this issue, I love you and I know you're struggling and I am in no way condemning your behavior because all of us are sinners. I'm just calling it is what it is, sin. But my word to you is this. God doesn't hate the sinner. He hates the act of sin. So no matter what the sin is, as I mentioned the list before, and as Florence Gump would say, that's all I have to say about that. You see, as a believer, there are opposing forces within each of us. You know, the flesh is responsible for our worldly materialistic needs and desires, and Satan is huge on playing into that as long as we are ourselves. While the Holy Spirit is responsible for your connection with God and should reflect Jesus in you. Then you got Satan and all his demons doing their bidding as well. So to be able to free yourself from the shackles of the devil, you will need the help of God. You see, praying strengthens your relationship with God. And it reminds you, hear me here, it reminds you that he is always there by your side. And sadly, most believers don't even realize the power that they have against the enemy's schemes. Many people including myself in the past, have fallen victim to Satan's tricks again and again. And most don't even realize that Satan is the one behind the schemes. He is the master of deception. If Christ is in you, which I pray that he is, remember this. You yield a lot of power to defeat the enemy. More power than you probably realize. So here's a list of some of the scriptures that you should probably be reading and studying and practicing See, 1 Peter 5 eight tells us to be sober-minded and alert because your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Clearly showing us that the devil is looking to devour us. Psalms 34, verse 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. This is just a reminder that God is all we need to overcome any spiritual attack. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. This verse reminds us that God is the source, which is why we should submit 
and rely on him alone. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. This is a reminder that what we carry always outweighs whatever the devil would try to do to us. It should serve as a source of comfort for you. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 11 through 17. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, because it's coming, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one that he's going to be shooting at you. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. These verses carry all the answers. Remember, attacks will come. But we should never be scared of any attacks because God has already conquered this sinful, fallen world. Thank you for watching. And if you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'd love it if you could like this video, comment on this video because I'd love to hear what it is you guys have to say. And share this video. And I will see you guys on the next one. See ya!